Okay, we are back, and uh, actually, I'm giving these lectures one after another. So, uh, I'm going to talk to you about a delightful result called the mean value theorem. What does it say? It says that take a function f from a to b. Sorry, from a b to r. So, a b is a closed interval in r. Now, assume that f is continuous on a b. See, continuous on AB actually means at the right and left hand points, we are talking about at the point A, we are talking about right continuity, at the point B, we are talking about left continuity, because I do not know anything about this function outside the interval A and B. Then assume that F dash, the derivative exists on the open interval AB. Then, I am writing in red, it is so important. Then there exists, this is a sign for there exists C, which is lying in the open interval A B, that is, is strictly bigger than A and strictly less than B, such that F B minus F A is F dash of C into B minus A or the way most calculus books write so what does this signify let us look at the picture the geometry and that will be enough so this is f prime c so this is the way calculus books write whichever way you i i usually write in this form or you can take this form but this form would immediately give you some geometric meaning. Let us just try to see that. So, I draw some of the function is like this between A and B, a continuous function, nice, of course, nice looking, and it is differentiable at every point. It means derivative simply means that you can draw a tangent line at each point, one unique tangent at each point, one tangent only. So, what is my f b minus f a by b minus a? So, if you look at the point a, I mean at this point, the coordinates of this point are a and f a. The coordinate of this points, this point b and f b, the end points. Now, let us join the these two end points a f a and b f b of the graph by a straight line. And if I take this line, if I write it as L, then slope of L is equal to F B minus F A by B minus A. What does it tell you? What, what does this mean? It tells you, okay, it does not matter. I can have a point C lying between A and B. So, this is the point C. So, if I draw a, the tangent at that point, the tangent to the curve at the point C F C, because this point is C F C, tangent to the graph of the curve, graph of the function at the point C F C that must be parallel to the line segment joining B F B and A F A and then that means that they, they have the same slope, but the slope of the tangent line at the point C F C is nothing but F dash C and that is exactly what it is written. So, the geometry gives you the answer. Now, the question would come is this only done for functions which are on uh, some closed interval, it does not tell me anything if I take function say from R to R. Of course, once you have functions from R to R, you are more flexible. So, it does not matter, then you take any two points A B on R, then the same story can be told that you can always write F B minus F A by B minus A is equal to some F dash C, where C is strictly lying between A and B. 
if you assume that the function is continuous and differentiable throughout. Now, let us take one by one the consequences of the mean value theorem. So, let us look at the first consequence. So, let us just keep the definition to f from a b to r the definition which we have started. Now, let me consider the situation where f is continuously differentiable. It means that f not only has a derivative, but the derivative of f as a function of x is continuous. So, I repeat a function is continuously differentiable if the derivative of f as a function of x is continuous. So, now uh, I have just told you about continuous differentiable function. So, let me assume that f is continuously differentiable. So, f dash x is continuous. Now, the interesting feature is the following that Suppose I take the interval a b, closed interval a b, and I say that f dash x is continuous means it is continuous on the closed interval a b. So, I cannot say just continuous on the open interval a b, of course, it is all continuous on the open interval a b if you say continuously differentiable. Let us assume that f is not only differentiable over the open interval a b. Let us check that f is differentiable on the closed interval a b, but at the right interval at the right side you take the left derivative uh, the right derivative at a and the left derivative at b. So, let us go on this thing. So, f dash x is continuous on a b. Now, what does it tell me? It tell me the following fact. That if this is true, if f dash x is a continuous function, then if I maximize this function, maximize or minimize does not matter because a b is a closed interval, this is a finite number alpha, this bound exists, or maybe it is better to say capital M because it is maximum. So, this value is finite. So, what is the consequence of this now? The consequence is the following. Now, at the two end points I apply the mean value theorem to get the following f b minus f a by b minus a is equal to f dash c for some c in a b. Now, whatever be your f dash c does not matter, it has to be less than m. So, f b minus f a is by b minus a is less than equal to m. So, f b minus f a is less than equal to m times b minus a. Now, let us see what happens. So, you have got this fact. Now, if I swap b with a, I am changing b with a, what will what 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 sort of inequality will I get? So, now I make a swap Right. So, if I change the inequality, then I, I can get a reverse inequality that this is greater than minus m times v minus a. So, let me tell you how. Now, you have got this. So, but you also know that because of our studies about continuous function that the minimum value of this f dash x over x minus a b, this value also exists. 
So, this is like this is m, but f dash c is then greater than or equal to m because m is the minimum value. So, I can again have this Now, this simply means the following. Let us see what does it mean. It means that no f dash c is here greater than or equal to m. So, what would happen is that we will write now how do I get this? So, f b minus f a by b minus a greater than or equal to m. So, you get f b minus f a is greater than or equal to m times b minus a. So, this is a fact that you can get immediately from the mean value theorem, but what does it tell? It does it tell me anything more? The fact is again this. Now, if I now take if you have a f b minus f a by b minus a, you can write this as f dash c. Let me take the modulus of this quantity. If you take the modulus of this quantity, this implies mod of f b minus mod of f a is less is equal to f dash c the mod of b minus a, but again because f is f dash c is bounded f dash, f dash x is bounded mod of f dash x is bounded the absolute value also must be bounded it cannot blow up. So, the absolute value also has some maximum value. So, bounded actually means the because the derivative is bounded so f dash x is less than some capital L. So, so let f dash x is less than equal to some capital L for all x element of a b and this implies the following. This implies that f b minus f a is less than equal to L times b minus a. Now, it does not matter whatever x and y you choose between b and a. So, you take any x and y between b and a, I can always show that f x minus f y is less than equal to L, the same L x minus y. So, this simply means that this property is called the Lipschitz property. So, we say that f is Lipschitz and this is a very, very important property in many aspects of mathematics and engineering sciences, economics and all those things. So, f is Lipschitz over a b with Lipschitz rank L. A very unlikely function which satisfies the Lipschitzianness over any given interval is a sine function. It, it's very unlikely. So, for example, you take the sine function. So, take any a strictly less than b, and you can write sine a minus sine b by b minus a is equal to cos of. So, I am applying the mean value theorem cos of some c, where c is lying between strictly between b and a. But so again you can write mod of sin a minus mod of sin b is because cos of c is always less than 1 is less than equal to mod of b minus a. So, with Lipschitz rank l equal to 1, the sin function is Lipschitz in the interval a to b. Now, a very simple application of this is the Rolle's theorem. 
which usually is taught in calculus classes before the mean value theorem, but I decided that we should go from the mean value theorem to the Rolle's theorem and it makes the li makes life obvious. Some people say okay, no, no, you should do Rolle's theorem first because Rolle's theorem is used to prove the mean value theorem, but does not matter you can always uh, prove the mean value theorem without the Rolle's theorem. So, let us look at Rolle's theorem, Rolle's was a very colorful character by the way, but uh, this theorem is very interesting. Same sort of stories. Now, write down the mean value theorem. Now, make this interesting assumption. The assumption is let f b is equal to f a. So, if you assume that f b is equal to f a, then you are showing the following that then f dash c is equal to 0, which means if this is holding. So, if f b is equal to f a, there exists c which is in the open interval a to b such that f dash c is equal to 0, which means I can find the critical point of the function between lying strictly between a and b. For example, if you look at uh, this diagram to explaining the Rolle's theorem. So, this is a and this is b, the functional heights are same, so it is like this for example. Then you see there is always one point here where the tangent is parallel to the x axis and that is exactly the meaning of f dash x equal to 0 which we had not told about in the last lecture. The tangent parallel to the x axis means that it has a 0 angle with the x axis and hence the, tan the slope value is 0 because that is the tangent value is ta the tangent of the, the slope of the tangent is actually tan of the angle at which it intersects the x axis which is a very well known fact. So, here is your c. So, you see how interesting result of the mean value theorem leads you to several more facts. There are certain things, there are more things you can talk about. Now, I will tell you something interesting. Suppose f dash x is 0 throughout the interval a b, then what is going to happen? So, use the mean value theorem to show that if f dash x is equal to 0 for all x in a b, then f is constant on a b. I, I would leave you to work on this, it is just fun. So, how by simple arguments you can get fantastic ideas about the nature of functions. So, with this let me stop and in the next talk we are going to talk about a very important thing. If I want to compute a function which is slightly difficult like if I tell you compute sin 3 degrees you cannot immediately give me the answer. So, is there any way to ex compute them? these sort of difficult functions by just doing basic arithmetic operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. The answer amazingly is yes, we can do a very good approximation and we will talk about that in the next class on Taylor's expansion. Thank you very much.